Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to explore the energy analysis capabilities of Autodesk Formit Pro and how it can be used during the design process. I'll walk you through the interface of the software if you're not familiar with it. We'll model a simple form, then we will explore the energy performance tools that link to Insight. Then finally, I will give you my opinion about the software and if it can actually be used to guide design decisions during the feasibility stages. All right, let's dive in. Autodesk Formit Pro is a 3D modeling software uh, that is part of the Autodesk AEC suite and it's basically a bit of a more intuitive uh, design tool that is a bit quicker and less rigid uh, than Revit. It's kind of the equivalent of SketchUp in the Autodesk world. So let's explore the interface. Let's type in Formit Pro. And then let's go to the web version of the software. Great, we're in. As you can see, it's a very simple interface with a few tools and I'll walk you through uh, some of them as we go through this exercise of modeling a simple uh, house, a simple form. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to this little clog here, which are the settings, and I'm going to change the units to metric millimeters. Then the other thing that I'm going to do is to start drawing a, a simple outline of my building. So if I click on this uh, pencil tool, it gives me a few options. I'm going to pick the line. And then starting from the uh, origin of the axis y, z, uh, y, x, y, and z, I'm going to start uh, entering my dimensions. So just like SketchUp. And then as you can see, um, it kind of like the lines kind of settle on the parallel lines to the main axis. So once that's done, I'm going to uh, hit escape a couple of times, and then I'm going to click on this surface once. And once I do that, it's going to show me this hand pointing up. So what I can do is that click once again, and then drag the form uh, and type in by how much I want it to extrude. Okay, very good. Now onto the roof. What I want to do is to have a simple gable roof. I'm going to draw a line in the middle, hit escape, uh, select that line once again, move it, lock into the Z axis as you can see, and then move it 1.5 meters. And before I do anything else now, I need to set a location for my project. So if you look on, if you click on this tool right here, that opens up a map and you can enter uh, anywhere in the world. So I'm going to uh, place my project right in front of the subtle minster. Very good. So this is the subtle minster and my project is going to be right here in this field. And so there are two things that you can do now. You either just set the location only. So it will just take the information from the nearest uh, weather station. Or the other thing that you can do is that you can import the satellite image and the terrain. Let's do that for a minute, see what it looks like. This is pretty cool because uh, what this allows you is to have the context uh, to scale. Uh, which in here is not very relevant, but if your project is situated in a very dense urban area, then that will uh, basically be very useful. Okay, great. So now that we have our building and our location, we can start looking at some analysis tools within the software. So the first one that I want to try and show you is the Sun Studies. So what you can do is that you can turn on the shadows. Can't really see them very well here because of the terrain. 
uh, but you can turn on the shadows uh, and then change uh, the time of the year and, and the time. Uh, and what you can also do is have that little sun editor, which is pretty handy to look at the impact of the sun on the shadows and on your building. And the next tool that I want to show you is the solar analysis. So if you click on the, the, the sun and you click on solar analysis, it opens up this window and what is it's actually asking you to do is to select the building form that you want to analyze and that is quite useful because uh, as, as we said if you um, have like a building in an urban context and you have modeled other buildings around it you don't want the solar analysis to be on everything you want it to just be on your project so you basically you um, select the project the the area that you want to the software to analyze and then you hit analyze but before i do that i want to see the cumulative uh, solar panel feasibility for the whole year not just by the the month peak and so great i click analyze and this is what it gives me so basically what it's showing you is uh, the radiation values uh, of each surface. So for example, uh, you can see that this is the south and you can see that obviously this is the surface that gets the most radiation uh, followed by uh, the south elevation, the south facade, and obviously the north facade is the area that will get the least uh, radiation. So uh, basically, if you want to place uh, solar panels uh, on your building, then obviously this is the best place to place them. This is quite simple and um, obvious in a sense, but when you have more complex building forms, then that can um, this exercise can be uh, much more useful. The next thing that I want to do is that I want to explore the energy performance of this little building. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to go right here and generate the insight. And it basically what it tells you is that you need some levels applied to your form before it can do that analysis. So let's do that first. If we go here on the right hand side, and we click on this panel for to add the levels. We can add the level and rename it ground floor. And then let's say maybe it's 150 millimeters above the floor level. So what we can do now is to select our building, go to properties, and then click on use levels. And as you can see, the only level that we have is the ground floor and it's checked. So now it has applied that level to our form. And as you can see, there is a blue line is 150 millimeters above uh, the ground level uh, that is our level. Very good. So now we can generate our insight. And it's going to think a little bit about it for a while. And what it's doing right now is that it's calculating all the possibilities, all the little iterations that you can make to uh, make your building uh, as energy efficient as possible. And we'll see in a second what that looks like. All right, so now it tells us that the energy analysis is complete and we can go to view our insights. So this is what it gives you. And as you can see, it, the software has already made some assumptions for us, including the windows. We haven't modeled any windows, but the software has made some assumptions and has you know, thought that we could potentially use some windows in our building. So it has made some assumptions and it has made those calculations uh, of the energy performance of the building based on these assumptions. So it's telling me right now that this building uh, on average would consume 
350 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. This is quite steep. So the first thing that we're going to look at is this benchmark comparison, because you might think 350, what does that mean? Uh, how does that compare to an efficient or a non-efficient building? And basically this is your benchmark comparison card where it tells you, you are here. This number up here is the worst that your per building can perform at. So say you don't have any insulation, it's all glazed. All of these factors will make it uh, extremely inefficient. And then this number down here is basically telling you this is the potential of your building. This, you know, in an ideal world, if everything uh, is optimized to perfection, this is how well your building can perform. And basically what that means is that it can even produce a little bit of energy rather than consume it. And then it gives you uh, some other benchmarks like the Architecture 2030 um, uh, objective, which is all all the buildings are supposed to strive to this number uh, by 2030. Um, so our building is quite up high and we need to look at all of these cards, all of these things that we can change uh, in order to make it more energy efficient. So the first thing that I want to do before we get into that is uh, going back to the general panel of Insight and just adjusting a few parameters. So this is our model right here. And what we want to do is going again here to this little clog and basically uh, setting up uh, some parameters uh, that will help us read uh, the building more uh, efficiently. Uh, the default units that we would like to use and that's metric. Then the, the results that we want to see, you can either see them by annual cost or energy use intensity. We want the energy use intensity. And this is the widget importance. And basically what that means is that uh, you want to the, the widgets, the, those cards to be shown to you by order of importance. So, so the cards will show up in a way that uh, tells you what are the most important uh, parameters that will affect your building. Okay, so if we go back in, we looked at the benchmark comparison and the second card that we have here is the model history. And basically that means that every time you make a, a change uh, in those cards, in those parameters, then it will show up in the model history. So we can go back uh, to before you made a change. So the most important parameter that will uh, dictate the energy performance of the building is the HVAC, which is, you know, makes sense. Then the operating schedule, the roof construction, the lighting efficiency, and so on and so forth. So if we go to the HVAC, then basically here, it's uh, showing you uh, the potential of each uh, strategy on the energy efficiency of your building. So your, our building is the triangle and it's right here. And basically it's telling you if you use, for example, a high efficiency heat pump, then this has the potential to reduce your energy consumption by quite a lot. So if we move, this arrow here to high efficiency uh, heat pump, then you can see that the energy use intensity goes down by quite a bit. Okay, we've done that. Then the operating schedule, say this is a house or the heating schedule is not gonna be on 24 seven. So let's say, for example, the heating schedule is 12 to six. That shows you once again how much uh, the, en the overall energy use intensity can go down by making this change. Okay, if we go to roof construction, it's basically assuming that the building is worse than uninsulated, which I don't know what that is. 
maybe has no roof. Uh, but basically what you want to do is that it's fairly you know, reasonable to assume that your roof is going to be insulated somehow. So if we move this toggle and say, okay, the roof is going to have some sort of insulation, we don't know yet what insulation it will be, but it will have some sort of insulation. You can see again how much this has impacted the energy use intensity. And then you can go through all of these one by one. You have things like the efficiency of, of the glass in the south, of the window glass in the south, uh, that has a little bit of an impact. The window to wall ratio in the northern elevation also has a little bit of an impact, although here it's not really showing much of an impact. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a sec. Um, and so on and so forth. And the other, the last thing that it tells you is that because uh, this building has the potential for uh, energy production through PV panels, it will tell you that you can potentially uh, have energy panels in your building. So say, for example, we want 60% uh, uh, of the PV service of the roof to be covered in PV then you can see once again how much that impacts uh, your energy performance. Okay, great. So basically, we managed to reduce the energy consumption of the building by quite a, a lot um, while doing these uh, little tweaks and changes here and there. So now I want to talk to you a little bit more about the limitations of this approach. So the first limitation that I have um, observed in the software is the window to wall ratio. And basically here, what it tells you, according to this graph, is that it doesn't really matter if your northern elevation has no windows or if it has 90% of the surface of your northern F uh, elevation is covered in glazing. It doesn't seem to impact the energy performance by that much, which for me makes me a little bit suspicious. Similar thing, if you go back to um, the sudden elevation, whether the sudden elevation has 95% of glazing or 0% of glazing, it seems like the impact is not that big. This is making me a little bit suspicious because we know as designers or even as just people who use the space that if you have uh, in, in a cold climate, if you have a southern elevation that is nicely glazed in a nice sunny day, you're going to uh, feel the warmth and you're not going to need any heating. Uh, and this is the basics of uh, passive uh, design where you maximize the uh, openings in the southern elevation and minimize the openings in the northern elevation to prevent the heat to escape from the northern elevation. And those are the rules of thumb for good design. And we know that to extend that comfort zone, uh, passive solar passive strategies are extremely impactful in reducing the energy use intensity of the building. So I think it's an interesting tool overall to kind of like assess the potential of different strategies uh, on your building and just put some numbers to them. Uh, but it's not necessarily a, 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 a useful tool to design uh, passive strategies into your building. What it does really well is providing you with a, an assessment um, for the potential of your project to use active solar strategies like PV panels and where to place them um, to get the best out of them and how much that can offset uh, the energy consumption inside your building. But I wouldn't really use it to determine or implement any other passive strategies inside the building. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to know a little bit more about how to determine the best passive strategies for your buildings, watch the video up here where I go much more in detail into the power of the psychrometric chart. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.